Hello and welcome to my AA's art channel. My name is Ilkan Wiersma and today I'd like to show you how I drawn this snipe with pastels. And I hope you can see this snipe. I will have a photo uh, pop up but now you can uh, without the frame because uh, this piece I did uh, quite some months ago and um, I already have been framed it. And normally I, uh, normally I um, quite uh, I framed my pastel pieces quite quickly after I'm uh, finished with them and just uh, that is because uh, to give them, uh, them a little bit more protection because you can uh, damage them quite easily with your fingers and uh, because of the, the pastels so therefore I like to uh, uh, frame my pieces uh, quite quickly after I am finished with them and uh, also for this piece I have you will see me some using some uh, liquid or some fluids uh, and uh, that's this one and it's uh, a alcohol based fluent of 69% um, uh, oh sorry I uh, 96% <laughs> and um, I uh, am using that especially on the background and some details but I will uh, explain it in the tutorial a little bit more and show you what I did with that and um, yeah, I like to try uh, new things out and this was one of those things that I saw people using on the internet, on the YouTube especially and uh, I thought that would be nice to try uh, out and maybe I could do some effects with them and um, use them uh, a little bit more in my drawings. But this was the first time I am uh, using that alcohol fluent. So I hope you like it and let's start the tutorial. First I start uh, in uh, I'll start with uh, lay in my first layers of pastel. I need uh, I need some pigment on a paper so the alcohol uh, can uh, pick up that those uh, pigments and um, uh, let them um, yeah be uh, uh, almost like paint and uh, but yeah, I, I have to mention that the alcohol makes the, the colors quite darker. So uh, when you use the alcohol, the, the lighter colors will uh, darken up quite a bit. So um, keep that in mind. If you like to try the alcohol, it, it darkens the colors quite a bit. So uh, for my under layers, it's uh, okay. But for my highlights, uh, I have to be aware of the effect of the, of the alcohol. And I will have uh, later in this drawing um, a, a, a mixture of the alcohol and the white. But... Um, I will come back uh, to that uh, in a moment because first of all I liked of uh, I uh, I'm layering in my, my background and uh, as you can see uh, here I am uh, using the, that al that alcohol and I found it on uh, the bigger portions of this drawing uh, quite hard to get rid of those brush strokes so I was tr just trying it out and I was um, yeah, uh, I wanted to know how the alcohol would uh, react uh, with the pastels, of how, how those two will uh, react uh, to each other. And uh, it works, but on the bigger pieces, it's, it, I found it quite hard to, uh, yeah, to get rid of those brush strokes. And I don't like brush strokes uh, in my drawings because it uh, draws off uh, the, atten the attention of the, uh, of the original piece of my details. So uh, as you can see here, you see little lines that I... Uh, try to uh, get rid of and uh, that's that was a, bi a bit harder on the uh, on the bigger portions of the drawing so on the smaller portions I found it a little bit easier to use the alcohol but I also have to mention that I am using paper with quite um, uh, uh, quite the ability to uh, uh, draw in many layers so if you have uh, some pastel paper which can take this fluent you have to be uh, aware of that it, it has to uh, yeah can take this this fluent and don't uh, ruin your paper so uh, you have to know that but if it uh, can take the alcohol it can be handy on uh, paper uh, where you want to uh, layer of use quite some layers but it can take uh, as many layers as as the paper uh, that I am uh, using and it's the Claire Fountain Pastel Matte. So if you have uh, maybe a little bit yeah cheaper one and you want to test things out or you have another uh, brand of paper, maybe the alcohol can, uh, can be helpful there because I basically uh, needed one and for some pastels just uh, uh, two or one or two layers to get in a nice rich coverage with the alcohol and the pastel so therefore they work quite quite uh, well but um yeah like uh, i uh, said for this paper it isn't that handy for me because i can easily lay in many layers because th this paper can take uh, many layers and therefore um yeah i can um, i think i i can uh, do those backgrounds 
easier with uh, just the pastels than uh, using the alcohol with it because of the brush strokes I am creating and I don't want the brush strokes uh, to be as uh, clear and as visible in this piece because the, the because the water is um, there's not much movement in this water so all those uh, the, the texture I uh, am creating with the brush will uh, distract the viewer and um, yeah so therefore I have to be uh, a little bit careful to not to make too much uh, texture in those uh, bigger sections and for the leaves and the flowers I'm just uh, copying what I see I'm copying the different shapes uh, what I'm seeing and I'm not thinking uh, as, as them as leaves or as flowers but just seeing um, yeah, trying to discover some um, shapes and uh, just to copy them and uh, uh, drawing them as closely as I, as I can and it, I'm not drawing in every leaf on the flowers or every leaf in the water but um, yeah like I said I try to be as close as I can and even though uh, many of those shapes don't make sense at the moment but it will if you copy it right it will in the end piece when uh, all the things will come together and um, yeah, that's uh, that was the uh, one of the hardest things for me to learn to trust what you see and just copy what you see. And yeah, I will say it many times because it's so so important. But it will work if you do it. And um, yeah, you have to trust yourself on that. Also, I like to mention that I had to learn to use quite some colors. I like to say uh, uh, the more colors the better because you can uh, make uh, quite some nice transitions be transitions between the colors and also the colors will help uh, give the piece a richer feel in the end so therefore uh, try to use more colors than you may uh, uh, have getting used to especially in the beginning when, drawing, when you are drawing or painting to try to use uh, more colors and um, try to figure out which colors are work quite well together and therefore um, yeah you have to to experience that a lot and to you have to practice that a lot and you will discover nice transitions between colors and uh, colors who work uh, quite well together like on this big I uh, you may not see it that easy of that that uh, clear but but I also used uh, for example some purples and some oranges there and um, yeah like I said it gives me a nice rich feel in the end of this piece and also with the pastel it it um, it uh, works uh, quite well if you use uh, different colors because you can uh, blend them quite easily together and you can make uh, some nice uh, transitions you can make some harder transition transitions if you need uh, harder lines or you can make some softer if you have for example shadow parts or something like that and um, also on those feathers you can uh, I will blend them out and um, come back with another color and I, uh, that's how I build up and build up my layers just uh, till I like it and I also blend with colors and uh, I mean by that that I'm using different pencils and I'm layering them over each other and uh, I use a light hand when I'm laying in my colors and I uh, blend with a different color some colors underneath so if uh, for example on those leaves I'm laying in a base layer of green some blue and then I come back with another green pencil and I'm blending those colors together just by layering that another that other color over those uh, on the layers and uh, yeah that can uh, give you also some nice transitions between colors because um, if you for example you use a green on the layer with a blue on the layer and you will get a uh, yellow pencil the 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 mixing those colors that yellow with that green and the yellow with the blue will give you some different results and that can make some uh, quite some nice transitions between the colors and uh, you have to sometimes you have to those nice uh, you need those nice transitions to give it a, uh, a natural uh, look so uh, that's also a way that I like to blend just using the pencils instead instead of my fingers or a, um, a blending tool or something like that and most of the times I you see will see me uh, uh, blending with my fingers that's just a personal uh, preference but I like to uh, use my fingers for that and um, you can ha also have uh, some great tools for that but I uh, have the feeling that I have much more control on how many I uh, have to blend and um, yeah therefore I'm using my fingers 
and like on this leaf it, it i know that this leaf is um uh, it's a, a little bit bent and therefore i have to watch closer my reference photo uh, and i watch the shapes but i also watch the darks and the lights and those the, the darks and the lights are very very important much more important than the actual color because if you would um, have this piece and you would uh, see the original photo there will be um, uh, quite some um, difference different okay i will try that again there will be quite some differences between the colors and that's okay because it uh, still has that photorealistic look but um because that's because i'm using quite some darks and some lights and those are very very important and i'm not drawing and painting hyper realism just realism and that's the difference between hyper realism and um, realism photorealism it uh, with photorealism you will try to get that um, feel that's uh, for example somebody uh, someone body is watching your piece and it they say to you uh, well it looks like a photo and uh, uh, that's sort of reactions and um yeah with photorealism it is a photo basically it is uh, handmade but it's it's just perfect and everything is in the right place and everything has the right right colors and then you have hyper realism and that kind of that that um, technique of hyper realism uh, that uh, would take me much much more time to finish some piece and i like this i like photorealism instead of hyper realism so therefore i'm always uh, painting uh, photorealism and sometimes i like to mix things up with some um, abstract backgrounds or something like that but most of the time i'm just re using a reference photo well here i come uh, back with uh, getting uh, rid of those uh, lines oh and here i'm having the, the brush and uh, here like i said earlier on here is the uh, i'm using that texture that mixture of the white pastel with the alcohol and also a little brush to uh yeah making little highlights and and that's basically our little um dots and little lines with um just white pastel and you can uh, make uh, quite easily quite nice little details that way so that i will remember and i may use that same technique in another piece and therefore i like to use of i like to try new things and um, because i uh, discover new things like in this one but like i said i uh, like the uh, pastel drawings without the alcohol so i think i will not use it as many but maybe for the highlights So um, yeah, I, I think in the uh, near future I will do something with uh, paint uh, and especially acrylic paint, which I never normally I never use, like some gold colors and some uh, silver. But I also uh, think I'm gonna go do a project uh, with those because yeah, I like to uh, try new things out and new techniques. So I will do that also in the future. If you like that, please uh, stay. Uh, tune to my uh, channel and you can do that to subscribe to my channel i would really like that and if you also uh, like it you can follow me on facebook instagram and on my own website and on my own website i have basically every drawing i painting i uh, make especially when i, I make tutorials of them they are, those will also uh, be on my website so if you like that you can uh, watch uh, quite some paintings there um, and some drawings of course and for now, yeah, like I said, I hope to see you at my next video. And um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the description below, in the uh, comment sections below. That was the word I was looking for. Bye-bye, till next time.